Mary Stanhope. How do you spell your last name? S-T-A-N-H-O-P-E. And your story? story is back in Colorado, where I'm from, but I've been out here for many years. Went home about 15 years ago with my daughter and my cousin, a bunch of family in the car, about five of us. And we were driving into Colorado, and it was in November, which is not unusual for snow, and got into Denver and decided to spend a couple of days and come back. And it was in the evening, and it was raining in Denver, and I figured, well, we're going to hit some snow. Well, we got going, and the higher up we went, we got snow started that kept piling up, piling up, and we were heading towards the city of Vail. We were going over Vail Pass, which is about 12,000 feet at the top. And we got to the top, and it kept getting worse and worse, and it was harder and harder to hold the car on the road. And I've driven in a lot of snow, my cousin has, and he was driving at the time. We were switching off, and the windshield wipers, the snow would come down, the wind was the snow would fill the window, and the windshield wipers would close this way, and as soon as it went that way, it covered the window. I mean, absolutely. We were rolling the car windows down on the side to make sure we didn't go over the side. And he was watching out his side window because he thought there was oncoming traffic. But we never saw any traffic. So anyhow, here we are. We're going probably five, seven miles an hour and just sliding all over the place. And we kept thinking, gee, it's funny. There's no cars. And we get up to the top. My daughter at the time is probably about 12. And she's saying, we're going to get stuck here, aren't we? We're, what happens if we get stuck here? And it was getting to where we didn't. My cousin said, I don't know how much farther we can go. It was getting deeper and deeper and deeper. And I said to her, you put on all the layers of clothes, and we walked down to Vail. And she says, it's freezing. And it was, it was. It was a blizzard. And she was just freaking out. We got up to the top. And I kept saying, we just have to get to the top, because if we can get down, it'll be better. So it took a trip that would normally take 20 minutes to go over the pass, took us three and a half hours. Freezing cold, wind was blowing. We finally got over the top, got down to the gas station, and pulled in, and we were all breathing a sigh of relief at that point that we'd made it without having to get out and walk, because we both, North Dakota, Colorado, we both knew it was touch and go. Got to the bottom, and the state patrol back there pulled up and said, we've been waiting for you. And we said, what? He goes, on the other side of the pass, the east side of the pass, he goes, we knew that the last car over was the out-of-state plate, but we didn't know. Wait, we'd been waiting to see if we were going to have to send somebody up for you as soon as we could. They'd close the pass right after we went over. And I know it, the way it was, if it was somebody that didn't know how to drive in snow, never would have made it. But my daughter just... She won't go back there in the winter at all. And she's 30 some years old now. But that was my experience on that one. But you gotta be careful even, I mean, even if you're experienced, you never know what, um, what will happen. But um, just be prepared. <laughs> okay, good story. And, and are there any other lessons you've learned in life? You have to kind of, um, Roll with the punches. You're going to have your good times. You're going to have your bad times. And usually it evens out along the way. Um, I was married 30 years to a wonderful man in the service. And we had our ups and downs. And he passed away. And But we have very good memories. We traveled all over Europe. And, you know what? I'm just but you have good days, you have bad days, and you can't let it get you down on the bad ones. Because it will get better. Okay. Well, thanks for your support. Uh -huh.